Hello and welcome to the GTI Setco YouTube channel. My name is Tom Honig. Uh, the video you're going to watch today is specifically about Vibration 101. What do vibration readings and vibration analysis look like when we look at what is called a spectrum? Every analyzer on the planet, vibration analyzer that is, puts out what we call a waveform, which is your vibration going up and down, and that turns that into a spectrum so that we can analyze that. And that is what this video is going to get into, is what is a spectrum, what are all these squiggly lines, and I'm going to really try to use as many layman's terms and depictions as possible to make it very, very simple for you to learn this, uh, this skill. And it's really, really not that hard, especially if you've had experience with any sort of other graphs of any type or size or shape. So let's jump right into it. What I have in front of me now is a spectrum. Uh, it comes from a waveform, and I will get into that further, uh, how we transform a waveform into a spectrum but for now let's focus on this view as our spectrum and it is a graph much like any other graph whether you were looking at your stock portfolio going up or down um, you would look at two dimensions of a graph to depict that and i've labeled the two dimensions of a vibration spectrum graph for you already here the first one on this up down scale on our side where my mouse is is called amplitude and all amplitude is folks is another word for amount amplitude is how much vibration what amount higher numbers are obviously more lower numbers are less on the bottom end. and that is your scale it is simply amount or amplitude on the other dimension here on the bottom I'm highlighting, you can see I've labeled that as well, that is our frequency, okay? Where is vibration happening? Is it happening at the one times spinning speed or RPM of a motor or a spindle that is spinning at 3000 RPM? So our peak here is you know close to 3000 RPM where this peak is right here. So it, it kind of tells us where things are happening. But without getting ahead of ourselves, let's just learn this one important part of what is a spectrum. It is amplitude looking over frequency so we know where vibrations are happening and what these peaks are telling us. In the next slide, I'm going to show you exactly what a waveform looks like and uh, what that spectrum on the bottom looks like after it's been transformed. Now, this spectrum I have in front of you now is the same spectrum I had up just a moment ago. Uh, the only difference is I've labeled and put the waveform above it of where it came from. You know, this, the, the literal vibration of both channels of our sensor. And that's something uh, to understand right away in this training is the GTI Setco sensor has two channels. It's measuring two axes. One where the magnet goes is your one axis and the red dot on the side of the sensor, uh, which your instructor will show you, is your other axis. And typically we're taking data in the axial position of our motor, pump, or spindle. Uh, we're going to use that red dot to face in the axial direction. But needless to say, uh, the vibration is, you know, simply this waveform that's happening in front of us. And that is converted into this spectrum. And the next video I'm going to show you is going to show you how we compute that waveform and actually turn its dimensions to create a spectrum. Okay, now I have this other waveform in front of it looks very similar to the last one we had up on the screen but uh, this will allow us to play this so I can actually show you dimensionally how we're going to turn that waveform which is time over amplitude and you can see on the right hand side it's explaining now we are frequency over amplitude and that is how that is converted we're looking at another dimension where we're looking at amplitude over frequency which as I talked to before, we measure in CPM, not Hertz. And the reason why is CPM, which is 
cycles per minute and hertz cycle per minutes exactly follows rpm and we're going to get into re the reason why uh, on our bottom frequency when we're looking at a spectrum in the spindle world or in the rotating machinery world looking at cpm is so much easier because if, so, if i've got a peak at uh, 3000 cpm well that correlates exactly at 3000 rpm uh, so if uh, I have a 3000 RPM peak, that's my imbalance peak, and all of a sudden it's wobbling, and I've got a, a 6000 and a 9000 peak, I can see that and very quickly know that because my RPM is 3000 and my CPM peak is 3000, they correlate to the same. I don't have to do the math of uh, hertz being, uh, you know, 60 CPM every hertz. So, you know, 60 hertz is 3,600 RPM if you do the math. We don't want to have to do the math. Once we know our bottom scale is in the CPM mode, we know that 3,000 CPM is 3,000 RPM, or 30,000 CPM is 30,000 RPM. Uh, it's, it's something to understand. I know this graph shows in hertz, which is a, uh, a selector or a toggle you, you can use in Vibro, but when we teach vibration, we teach amplitude over frequency measured in CPM, cycles per minute. Okay, folks, this is another great illustration that I'm going to be showing here from the Mobius Institute. That it really brings a lot of visuals into uh, the slide, and I'm going to actually, this is a video slide, so I'm going to be able to put it into motion here and, and be able to explain things through. <clears throat> but looking at the picture on the side here, we have a pillow block bearing with a, a little bit of a pulley and, a, you know, belt driven in the back by a motor, which we're not looking at those vibrations. We're only looking at where you see the little blocks here. So we're going to get a, a green waveform for this green pillow block. We're going to get an orange uh, waveform, which you can already see up here um, with the, the green blades of the fan. And the gray line, this swooping line that you see here in the waveform, is going to be our shaft. And that is done with this uh, block down here. So we're only looking at three different waveforms here. We're looking at the blades. We're looking at the bearings uh, here in this block. And we're looking at, finally, the shaft rotation. When I play this, you're going to see immediately the overzealous uh, warping that you see of that, uh, of, of that shaft showing this vibration uh, in this waveform out immediately. And the person that's displaying this is going to show how when we click on the green or the orange, what we're going to see for different... Uh, waveforms. So right now the orange is turned on and that's showing that. He's going to click the green here. So this is now the bearing defect for it or the bearing vibration in waveform. And you can see it's very close to the orange, um, but it, it is a different, uh, you know, in a different area and a different frequency. And right now he's just uh, lowering the amplitude of the green and then hiring it right now by turning that wheel so it's either worse or better. Uh, he'll be doing that with the waveform as well. And now he's bringing in the orange. You can see it falls in a different frequency there. And now he'll turn on the, uh, the shaft waveform and then the orange back on again just showing that you can raise and lower the amplitudes of all these different things like they would be in the real world. Um, so, you know, this really shows you what a scattered, you know, waveform would look like as we're taking vibration data, which is all coming from the sensor being on the green spot right there where he's showing the X. But now, <clears throat> if we would show what that actual vibration would look like, in one waveform, that's in red, what it would look like. It would swoop like it was with the gray, and it's adding in all the features of the green and the orange all into that one red waveform. But watch as we turn this thing sideways and actually get a depiction of what a spectrum looks like. That's the key here. Our waveform, the gray is obviously our bent shaft, the blades are in orange, 
And now we turn it sideways and look at that. It now becomes a start of what is called an FFT or a spectrum because we're turning that time over amplitude and we're spinning it completely as we are going to be frequency over amplitude. And that is really the easiest way for me to show you exactly how these waveforms become a spectrum and an FFT. But you can see anything that's vibrating, whether it's in balance, misalignment, blades of a fan, um, bearings like on that green pillow block, they're all happening at different frequency. And now he's speeding that up and slowing it down like he's speeding up the fan speed and slowing it down. Now he's raising the amplitude up and down. And you can see both the frequency changes with speed as much as the amplitude changes as thing gets back. Now he's completely turned that over into an FFT now or what we call a spectrum. We can see our running speed right here of our shaft. We can make it worse. We can make it better. Uh, same with the bearing, which is in our green. And here are blade pass frequencies. So you can clearly see how a spectrum can show you all the different vibration, el vibration elements in a spectrum. This is why we use this spectrum as our guide to diagnose what is wrong with uh, something that's rotating um, and using vibration analysis to do this in a spectrum. And <clears throat> this part of the 101 course is really to wrap your mind around how a vibration waveform like this has and can become turn into a spectrum and be able to see where vibration, vibration peaks are happening. So we know based if their amplitude is high, that's very bad. And if their amplitude is low, but we can still see what our imbalance looks like, what our bearings look like, and what our um, uh, blade pass frequency could look like, or, you know, a belt frequency or any other element that can be in a spindle motor or any other article of rotating equipment. Okay, another important aspect of vibration analysis, and as we look at spectrums, is this slide that I have up here right now. And I want you to take a close look at um, what it's showing. Now we're, we got peaks in the spectrum, just like we showed before, but we've got peaks in different frequencies way out here, you know, at 20,000 Hertz, or like we talked about 1.2 million CPM. Uh, Cause we, we look at uh, our spectrums in cycles per minute, as we talked about, but what it, this slide is showing that's really important is velocity is in green and acceleration is in orange and displacement is in purple. And you can tell by the way they, they slant this displacement. Displacement, we don't use it anymore. It only looks at low frequency stuff like an imbalance. Uh, you know, once it gets past this point out here, we don't even see any of the peaks out here because it focuses at the very low end of the spectrum where velocity is a pretty nice window if you if you if you look at this in windows you know uh like a velocity window and an acceleration window and those are the two windows that we look at spectrums in we look at a, a spectrum in velocity and we look at them in acceleration and why do we look at them in two different windows well very much this illustration shows why velocity shows a lot on the low end but not much on the high end where bearings reside. So we look at it in acceleration, which really hovers over this high end of the spectrum, which I'm gonna show you in the next sample of spectrums coming forward of why we look at acceleration so much uh, to look at bearing health. And we're really looking at velocity for misalignment, looseness, imbalanced, all the low stuff in the spectrum is really what the window focus of velocity is, is for imbalance, misalignment, looseness, where acceleration kind of ignores imbalance, looseness, and really 
highlights the upper side of the spectrum here in the high frequency range where bearings reside. So if we don't look at both windows, if we just look at velocity, we might miss a bearing out here. So when we look at a spectrum of a spindle or a motor or a pump or whatever rotating asset we're looking at, we want to look at the velocity window so we know the imbalance and misalignment and those conditions. And then we switch to the acceleration window so that we're looking at the high frequency end where gears and bearings and those things reside. So if you're only looking at one window like velocity, you may miss a bearing. If you're only looking at acceleration, you may catch a bearing but miss an imbalance or a misalignment that's going to create a bearing problem later. So it is very important that we look at both of these windows, folks. Um, it's very, very important. As I get to the next slide here, I'm actually going to show you some real data coming from real spindles in the field that we're going to be able to look at and, and sort of pick apart and see what's going on with them. Okay, as promised, we're going to look at uh, a really neat array of spectrums here. Uh, we've got about 10 of them. We're going to look at two, uh, these two in red right here. Um, so as you use the Vibro system, one thing you'll note is you will not have to alarm yourself to look at spectrums that are good spectrums. Only spectrums that are in yellow or red uh, that are coming up as an alarm are the spectrums that you want to analyze. And we, you know, we do a good job of making that easy so that you're not looking at good data. You're only looking at problem data that uh, could be a spindle or a motor in alert. So let's look at this first red one here. And when I click on it, it's immediately going to pull up the waveform, not a spectrum. That is where our system is designed and you can see it's a very strong very crowded waveform a lot going on in there uh, it's pulling almost 10 G's which is very high which is why it's in the red but let's look at the velocity spectrum we'll click down here on velocity and you'll immediately see we got two dominant peaks the rest looks pretty clear in velocity because remember in our last slide I showed that Velocity focuses on this low end of the spectrum, not on this high end of the spectrum. If I click over to acceleration real quick, you'll see a lot of these bearing peaks will start to pop up. But in velocity, they won't show up because I'm, I'm highlighting it. What really is the fault in this particular spectrum is on the low end of the spectrum. This spindle is running at 60,000 RPM. So if I put a marker there, you see I just put a red marker. Let's zoom in here. See, I put the red marker at 60 CPM or 60 RPM like we talked about before, and it lands right on the peak, which tells us it is in balance. But we also have a peak pretty close to it here, and let's see if that's a mathematical 120,000. It sure looks at 120 down here, but let's hit the next marker, and yep, yeah, boom, it falls right on 120. So that's something that's wobbling, boom, boom, boom. And you kind of see that right here in the spectrum, and that's how we use the spectrum. So this not only has a very strong imbalance, is why it's in the red, but it, it, it also has some misalignment or bent components with it, or it might just be so imbalanced, <coughs> it's inducing some looseness or imbalance in there as well. But let's bounce over to this other red one. And again, it's immediately going to push us right into our waveform, folks, uh, so that we can see that first. And again, this one also pulling 15 Gs, very crowded, scattered waveform. But as we dive into this one in velocity, well, the other one was 0.125 at the running speed. Now we're at a 0.02, so really velocity isn't the, the issue here. Yeah, the peaks are here. Uh, I can put it on the RPM and, you know, the misalignment, but it's very low in amplitude. But as we switch to acceleration, this is why we look at two different windows, and you'll see that almost shrink to nothing and all these high peaks in the high frequency range, almost 6 Gs. Allowable limit for a spindle is 1 G or less. We are 6 times the amount of an allowable uh bearing defect frequencies is what we see here in the spectrum. 
And again, this is how our spectrum is our friend, right? It's doing the analysis for us. We're really only looking for, if you think about it, let me, let me jump off this spectrum just a quick second here. And uh, so here is a, another feature I wanted to show you uh, when collecting data in Vibe Pro and the web app uh, when we're looking at spectrums. So see this fault detection button here. It's finding shaft misalignment and offset here. So let's, let's look at this spectrum instead of the one we looked at before. And we're going to look at the very last one here that was taken that's, that fault detection is, is uh, looking at. And again, you know, 12 G's, very crowded, very uh, busy waveform. But let's go to velocity real quick. Again, we don't see any these bearing defect frequencies are very, very low. Um, now, this major uh, shaft misalignment that the fault detection found will start damaging these bearings very, very quickly. But watch when I put my markers up on this. I'm going to hit the RPM marker. Imbalance isn't the issue. Look at that, folks. It's way down here at 0 0.001. But as I put my markers in, this one all the way up to almost 0 0.1. And then I hit the marker again and again and again. It's wobbling and, and it's really straining those bearings. So that's a nice uh, thing that I wanted to show you in the feature set that, you know, the fault detection will pick this up for you so that you have a way to have the computer or our AI, as you will, uh, look at the different spectrums as you learn what the different spectrums are. And uh, let me slide into just looking at me for I can use a few hand gestures. So there are really only three, three, there we go, three different spectrums that we're looking for that if you learn what those look like, imbalance, one large peak at the running speed, misalignment, the multiple peaks I just showed you at one times, two times, three times, four times, that is misalignment and looseness. And then those high bearing defect frequency stacks that we showed you in that last or the second last um, illustration where they're way out high, high in the frequency range um, are really the three that you only need to memorize. If you know what a, a bearing looks like, if you know, you know, a, a bad bearing, if you know what imbalance looks like and misalignment, that is 90% of what most analysts are looking for. That, you know, we can stretch out into, you know, finding whether it's an inner race defect of a bearing or an outer race or a gear or, or you know, uh, a rotor bar, but those are rare, rare things. If you, if you can remember those three and what they look like, you will know what 90% of the analysts that are level one, level two analysts are looking for and can make very, very educated calls. So I'm very hopeful that this is a very good start. Uh, you can play this video again uh, if there's something that you might have missed, but your instructor will help you as well answer any questions on what I went over of what makes a waveform into a spectrum and what those spectrums are telling you and review again because again if you can memorize those three different depictions in a spectrum of what imbalance looks like what misalignment looseness looks like which they look the same and what an impending bearing failure looks like you are going to catch 95 percent of the failures that are going on within the plant so uh, the further part of your instruction will be how to use the Vipro unit on the iPad, which is just very, very easy. And you'll start to get into uh, the web app uh, that I was just showing you here in the picture that shows uh, and lays out pretty much exactly the way the iPad does and does your trending and all that. Uh, but it's where your analysis gets done. So uh, really appreciate everybody's attention uh, and uh, in this instruction. And if you have any questions, please ask your instructor or you can reach out to us at GTI Setco at any time at www.gtispindle.com or www.setco.com. And uh, we thank you for your attention. Have a great day.